Good morning and welcome to St. John's McGuanago's Morning Praise. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Hasten to save me, O God. O Lord, come quickly to help me. The Lord is risen. Let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. The deep places of the earth are in his hand. The heights of the hills are also his. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Alleluia. This week we have been talking about faith and reason, and we made the first point that reason is a good gift of God, so is faith, and so reason and faith are not antithetical to each other. The problem is that our sinful, our sinful beings, our sinful nature corrupts reason and makes it bigger than what it should be, and that is the problem. We talked about how faith not only is a good gift of God, but it is something that is very powerful that can be misused. And when something that is really good and beautiful is misused, even more damage is done. Today we'll read from St. Paul's letter to the Colossians and talk about the magisterial and ministerial use of reason. From Colossians chapter 2. So then, just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, Continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of this world rather than on Christ. The Word of the Lord. Theologians talk about the magisterial and ministerial use of reason and even though those are big words, they're actually pretty easy to understand. Magisterial, think majesty, think king or ruler. Ministerial, think minister or servant. The magisterial use of reason says that it is king over God's revelation. The ministerial use of reason says reason is God's good gift that serves us by helping us understand scripture and God's word. Let's start with the ministerial use. If I come to a set of words on a page, I need reason to interpret them. Language is a part of that reasonable thing that we as rational creatures enjoy as a good gift from God. And so I need to have reason in order to understand a sentence, in order to, first of all, even read God's word. And so in that way, reason serves the purpose of God's revelation coming to us. But it's more than that, too. Uh, we have to look at a text and we have to decide, is this history or poetry? Is this apocalyptic language that is going to have grand imagery that, that doesn't correspond directly to the world, but gives us a symbol that teaches us a truth beyond just um, the physical world, such as St. Uh, John's revelation or, or the revelation of Jesus to St. John. And that's really important because when we come to scripture, we have to ask ourselves, do I take this literally, such as history, or do I take this symbolically, such as some of the Psalms or Revelation or some of the dreams in Isaiah and Ezekiel? And so we use reason. We use reason to say, here is God's message to us, and then we apply that to our lives. All of these things are the use of reason, the ministerial use. This ministerial use is when we are served by this gift of reason so that we can know God's revelation, his truth in scripture. The magisterial use, on the other hand, puts itself over scripture. It might say something like this. The Bible is a wonderful book, and it teaches us all sorts of wonderful things. 
But when it says something that is unreasonable to us, we go with our reason rather than with God's revelation. So I come across a story about a virgin birth, and I say, that must not be true, because my reason says, that is not how babies are made. We know scientifically that this is how babies are made, and a virgin birth is impossible. Therefore, I reason that this is a symbolic thing, um, or a myth, or something that isn't true in these scriptures, and I either ignore it or try to interpret it in a symbolic way. So in this way, reason becomes the majesty, becomes the ruler, the king over God's revelation. We can see a problem with that. As we have said before this week, that is a very unreasonable position to take. To think that we have the perspective, the power, the knowledge that can trump God's revelation. This seems to be very irrational, even though it is cloaked in rationality. And so I think the trick is this. The trick is this, that we use our reason until it bumps up against God's holy word, and then we go with God's revelation rather than our reason. So we're going to use our reason, this good gift of God, as much as we can and, and un, uh, uh, unchain its power that God has given us by this reason as people created in his image. But then have the humility, the fear of God to when we bump up to God's word and God's word says something against our reason, not to say God's word must be wrong, but that our reason must be flawed. And so St. Paul warns the Colossians who had been taken over by some of these worldly philosophies to say, you do philosophy according to Christ that everything is captive, all the thoughts are captive to Christ. And once again, this seems to be the most reasonable position. But here's the thing with reason and faith. We are unreasonable in a lot of different ways. We are unreasonable because we are sinful. And so God has to give us the faith. God has to turn us. God has to change us. As we'll talk about tomorrow, it's, it's really a bad situation, not because of reason, but because of our sinful will. And so we need God. We need God to change our hearts, and that's exactly what he gives us in faith. And sometimes that faith then goes against our reason. But this is also God's good gift, that we can be still, that we can sit and take in God's word and understand that he's bigger than us, and that he is on our side. If this Christ who comes and lives and dies and rises for us says, listen to me, I know more than you, and this is for your good, we can trust him. And what a beautiful thing it is that we don't have to understand everything rationally, but we can go by God's good gift of faith. The Te Deum. We praise you, O God. We acclaim you as Lord. All creation worships you, Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of heavenly hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the holy church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your glorious true and only Son, and the Holy Spirit advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you humbled yourself to be born of a virgin. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You sit at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that you will come to be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. In the morning, O Lord, I call to you. Be merciful to me and hear my prayer. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And we also pray. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us safely to this new day. Defend us with your mighty power and grant that this day we neither fall into sin nor run into any kind of danger. And in all we do, direct us to what is right in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.